For the following exercises, find the average rate of change of each function on the interval specified. So just remember, guys, what it means for average rate of change in terms of uh, for an interval, okay? Average rate of change is simply the slope of a straight line that connects two points on a particular graph, all right? So let's just say for argument's sake, you have a certain graph here. The function, I know my axis is a little tilted. There's the function. Any two points you want, point here, point here. If you want to find the average rate of change between those two points, draw a straight line that connects them and then find the slope of this line. Okay, that's all. Remember slope is equal to change in y over change in x as we have down there at the bottom. Now that's how you could do it, you know, uh, graphically, but we can also do it algebraically. Um, instead of using the graph to find the points, okay, of, of um, this and this, we can indeed use now our function with the corresponding x values to find the coordinates of these points, all right? That's essentially what the steps are here to solve this problem, all right? So let's take a look at number, uh, number one here. So these are the x values. Let's call this one x1 and this x2. Now let's begin with x1. Take x1 and plug it on in. Now x is just the same as the x, so there really is nothing to do here. This I could just write as g of x is equal to, I'm basically just rewriting it, 3x squared minus 2. All right, so this is my y value. Remember, g of x you can just think of as the y value. So this is the y, and my corresponding value for x was x. So my coordinates here would be x comma 3x squared minus 2. Okay, those would be the coordinates of this point. All right. Now, next, do it for x2. So here we have g now of x plus h. And that's now going to equal 3. Wherever you see x, put now an x plus h in for it, squared minus 2. All right, let's, uh, let's foil this, all right, meaning we're going to do x plus h times x plus h. Right, x times x, x times h, h times x, and then h times h. All right, I'm just going to erase it because I won't have too much space here. So the value now that we will get is going to be 3 times x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 2. Okay, minus 2. And now I can distribute the 3 if I wanted. Okay, where it would be now 3x plus 6xh uh, xh plus then 3h squared. All right, so that's what I'm going to do as I write my coordinate just to save a little space again, okay? So the x value is this weird thing, right? It's x plus h this time. And the y value is this weird thing, right? Remember, I'm going to distribute to 3. So this is 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3 h squared minus then 2, okay? All right, now that we have our x, let me make that a little neater. Now that we have our x and y coordinates, all right, I'll label this one x1, just like I did over here, and therefore this is going to be y1. This is our x2 and this is our y2. So now I'm gonna use a slope formula, okay? Let me move it up a little bit. So this is going to now be the y2 value here, so we have 3x squared plus 6xh uh, plus 3h squared minus 2. Then minus now the y1 value. So I'll put that in brackets. 3x x squared minus 2. Okay. All divided now by the x2 value of x plus h. Then minus my x1 value of just x. Then notice some things will cancel. These x's go bye-bye, all right? And the other thing that I can cancel is that when I distribute this negative, right, this 3x squared becomes negative, so I can cancel that with that one. And this negative 2 will become a positive 2, so that will cancel with that, all right? So what we are left with now is we are now left with, and I'm just going to reorganize this slightly. I'm going to write it as 3h squared plus 6xh all divided now by h. And I realize I got an h in common at the top, right? And so if I actually pull one of them out, or right for, from each term, I get this as the result, 3h plus 6x, 
all divided by h, right? I just pulled out a common h between those two terms. And then look, right? I can cancel those h's. So this is now the most simplified way to write your answer. So it's 3, so it's 3h plus 6x. That is the answer for that, that problem, all right? Now, look at how repetitive this is going to get. Let's do the same thing for this one now, okay? Here's our x1, and here is our x2. So first, let's work with the x1 value. So we have a of 9 will be equal to 1 over 9 plus 4, and we get then a of 9 being equal to 1 over 13. Okay, this is the y value, right? And this was your x value. So my first point is going to be 9 comma 1 thirteenth. Okay, great. Now let's work with the second one. Second one's a little uh, not as nice, right? It has a variable in it, but we treat it the same way. So now we're going to have a of 9 plus h, and that will equal 1 over, for this now, t value, I'm going to plug in, actually, I just realized we're using t in the equation, but yet I'm using calling this x. Technically, I should be calling this t. I apologize, but let's just leave it as x. All right, it's easier to, we know the coordinates are x comma y. So we're just leaving it as x. So let's plug in for t here. Let's plug in this 9 plus h value. 9 plus h. And then add 4 to it. So what do we have here? We now have 9 plus h is equal to 1 over, you would combine the 9 and the 4, so that's 13, right? 13 plus h. Okay, this is essentially your y value, so the coordinates now are going to be, here's your x, 9 plus h, and here is your y value, 1 over 13 plus h. And there we go. Okay, so we have now our two coordinate values. So what are we going to do? Plug it on into the slope formula. Remember the slope, I wrote it down here for you guys. It's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So here's our, so let's label this x1, and this will be y1. This will be x2, and this will be y2. So let's take that x, uh, excuse me, that y2 value, 1 over 113, well not 113, 1 over 13 plus h. Right now minus the y1, so that's 1 over 13. Then divided now by, here's our x2 value of 9 plus h, and here's our x1 value of 9. So what can we do with this? Well, we can definitely already cancel those 9s, right? That works. And now, you, I mean, you can leave the answer in that, in that way. Um, however, though, we might want to try to find a common denominator amongst these two to try to combine it into one fraction. All right. To do that, what you do is you take this fraction and you multiply it by the denominator of your other fraction. So you're going to take it and multiply it by 13 over 13. Then you're going to take this fraction and multiply it by the denominator value of your other fraction. Okay, so that becomes, oh, that becomes, sorry about that, phone's just ringing. Um, uh, must be, must be very important today. <laughs> so now we're going to uh, multiply it by 13 plus h over 13 plus h. All right. That almost looks like 13th, but it's a 13 plus h. So now when we do this, okay, we're now going to get the result of 13 over. So I'm looking at my first fraction over here. Right, we're going to get the value of 13 over 13 times 13 plus h, then minus now 13 plus h, and I trailed off into the other problem. So actually, give me one second, guys. I'm just going to try to put this right below here, okay? I don't want to, I need enough space over there. So this is then going to be um, 13 over 13 times 13 plus h, minus now 13 plus h over 13 times 13 plus h. Okay, all over, ah, all over h, right? It's still all over h. So notice what happens when I combine these two fractions, 
right? When I combine these two fractions, since they have a, oh, I got rid of the H. Since I combine those two fractions, since they have a common denominator, it's going to be 13 minus 13, right? So they cancel. And then what I'm going to be left with is H. Now, reworking this, this H will cancel because it's going to be the only, it's going to be all over H now. This H will cancel with that one, all right? So what we are left with then, and then we combine the denominators, right? What we would be left with then, and I'm just going to backtrack, just cancel those H's. The value then we are left with is going to be 1 over 13 times 13 plus H. And that is your average rate of change, okay? Now let's try to do the uh, last one over here, all right? I am... Uh, I'm going to try to just write the coordinates out without writing all the work, all right, just to save a little space. So here uh, we're going to have our first x1 value is 1, and then the corresponding y value here when we plug in this for x, it would be 1 over then 4, right? So I know that this is going to be 1 fourth. Okay, that's my first step. Then I'm now going to take this and oops, this thing, right, and plug it on in for my x. So I know that, uh, and, and to find y, that is, this is my x2 value, so that's 1 plus h. And my y2 value, without simplifying anything, I'm just going to write 1 plus h plus 3, right? And I can combine the 1 and the 3 here, so that would be 4, right? I'll do that. Okay, so this would be 4 plus h. All right, here's the second set. Now I can start plugging these into my slope. So this is x1, y1, and there's going to be x2, y2. So for the slope, we take the y2 value. So it's 1 over 4 plus h, okay? Then minus our y1 value of 1 fourth, of 1 over 4. This whole thing now divided by x2, which is 1 plus h, minus x1, which was 1. Okay, so notice what's going to happen here. The denominators cancel. And what we are left with again, we are left with this very similar fraction to what we had before. So what I'm going to do is do the same process here. Let me just move this over slightly. Okay, I'm going to multiply this fraction by the value of the denominator of the other fraction, 4 over 4. Then what I'm going to do is multiply now this fraction by the denominator of the other one. 4 plus h over 4 plus h, okay? And what do we get as a result? So let's first look at this. So we are going to get now uh, 4 over 4 times 4 plus h minus now, minus, minus 4, all right, plus h all over 4 times 4 plus h. Look at that, there's the common denominators. And then this whole thing now is divided now by just h by itself because we canceled the ones. Now what I'm going to do is combine these, okay? So I realize that when I combine the numerators here, because I can do that since I have now common denominators, I realize the fours are going to cancel, right? And what I'm left with then is I'm left with then, and I just realized I made, did I make a silly mistake? Yes, I made a silly mistake on the other one here, guys, right? There is a... Uh, there is a uh, negative sign here. So technically, this should have been a negative one. My apologies. All right. So same thing here. Uh, we're going to work through the same process. So this is, we would distribute the negative there. So this is negative h all over. This is 4 times 4 plus h all over now h. And what I can do now is I can multiply by the reciprocal right of the denominator when you take when you have a fraction divided by some other value you can take this fraction and divide it by the reciprocal of this okay that might make your light that might make it easier to see so i'm going to rewrite this okay this is negative negative h negative h over four times four plus h then multiply it by the reciprocal of h, which means that's 1 over h, okay? And notice now how the h's will cancel, all right? And what you're left with, and that's why I realize I left out that negative, that's what happens. You really want to write the work out. It'd be, it would be best. I always do that, but it's just 
not enough space here. So um, this becomes now negative one over four times four plus h. And that is then the average rate of change for the last function here. So guys, I really do hope this helped, all right? Uh, please subscribe if you can. And if not, no big deal. We still love you anyway. All right, take care.